Hello everyone, my name is Rodrin and you're watching the Minecraft Guide for Beginners, the tutorial series on YouTube for new and returning players to Minecraft 1.16. In this episode, we're going to stick close to base today. We've gone on some exciting adventures in the last couple of episodes. We've died a lot. We've screamed a lot. Our frustration levels have shot through the roof a lot, but we are sticking close to base today. Today's episode is all about brewing. So if you're here, if you enjoy what you're seeing, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know that this video is entertaining, informative education, and we're going to get stuck into our brewing guide. Okay, the first thing we have to do to get ourselves set up for potion brewing is that we have to craft a brewing stand. The recipe for this is pretty simple. It's one blaze rod, which is not really all that simple to get because you have to get them from blazes in the nether fortress. I'm sure if you've seen my previous episode, about the finding nether fortresses, you saw just how annoying those blazes can be to kill. And we also need three cobblestone. So you arrange them in the crafting table, like so, and that gives us the brewing stand. Now the brewing stand is what allows us to brew potions. So let's go down here to our potion brewing setup. Let's go ahead and right click the stand up to right there. And this is the potion brewing interface. You need to load the bottom with water bottles. You need to put a blaze powder there and you get blaze powder by crafting one blaze rod into two blaze powder and then you put your ingredients in here one at a time and they'll process into the water bottles below so let's go ahead and let's get some materials together and let's go ahead and get started on brewing here we're gonna brew up four different potions we're gonna do a slow fall potion we're gonna do a splash potion of weakness we're gonna do night vision and a swiftness so I'm going to go ahead and check our supplies real quick. We need to go fill up our water bottles. So we're going to leave one behind because we're only going to need 12. Now you can fill these up by right clicking the empty water bottle on any source block. Or if, you, if I had a cauldron here filled with water, I could use that to fill these up. So I might add the cauldron to the potion brewing setup a little bit later. But for now, let's just head out to the pond to fill these bottles up. And we'll be right back. Okay, we are at the pond now. There's plenty of water here, so I got my empty bottles in hand. And I'm just right clicking, and the water source block doesn't even disappear, and the bottles are just filling up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these done. We now have 12. Now notice that the bottles don't stack. The water bottles, they stack when they're empty, but they don't when they're full. So make sure you have plenty of room in your inventory when you do potion brewing. So we're going to pop on back into the house, get to the potion brewing setup, and then we'll be starting in on brewing up our first potion, a potion of slow fall. Okay, we're back here at our potion brewing setup, and we have all of our ingredients. We have some nether wart to convert the water bottles into awkward potions, which is the base for most potions. Notable exception is the potion of weakness. We have our phantom membrane, which will give us the slow fall effect once it's brewed into a potion. I also grabbed a little bit of blaze powder and I grabbed a blaze rod so I can show you how to craft a blaze powder. So we put one blaze rod in a crafting interface. This could be inside your inventory or in a crafting table crafting interface. And you'll get two blaze powder back. So three blaze powder should be enough for this episode, but I have one more blaze rod tucked away just in case. So let's go ahead and let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load up the water bottles into the bottom of our brewing stand. We're going to drop it in one blaze powder. Now, you see, we've charged it here. We can put another one right there in reserve. So when this bar runs out, then this will be consumed to fill that bar. We're going to drop another wart in our first ingredient slot. And now it's going to go ahead and process these three water bottles into awkward potions. Now, awkward potions by themselves don't have any effect. You have to add in another ingredient to give it an effect. And then once you've brewed up an effect, you can then increase the duration of the potion by brewing in a redstone dust or a glowstone dust to increase the magnitude of the effect. So we have just finished and now we have awkward potions, no effects in our tooltips. Let's go ahead and put the phantom membrane in. And that's going to brew up into the potion of slow fall. Now, slow fall, night vision are two effects that don't have magnitude. So you couldn't use glowstone dust to increase the magnitude of the effect because it's either on or off. It's a binary effect. But we can still use a redstone dust, and I'll demonstrate that with the night vision potion, to increase the duration of the effect. So we now we see we have a potion of slow falling for one minute and 30 seconds slow falling effect. So we're going ahead and pull these out. We got the advancement local brewery. And also note that the potions also don't stack as well. 
so that is how you brew a potion of slow fall now I'm going to link you guys to the Minecraft wiki page. It has a very handy visual rep, uh, chart of all the recipes in the game. I'm not going to go through each one one by one because that would be a very long episode of watching the brewing stand just continuously process ingredients. So I look down in the description down below for that link and uh, we'll be moving on to brewing up a splash potion of weakness next. Okay, and so our next potion on our list is a splash potion of weakness which is going to require a fermented spider eye and gunpowder. So we make the fermented spider eye by using a one spider eye, we use a brown mushroom, and we use a little bit of sugar, and that's going to ferment that spider eye into a fermented spider eye. So let's go ahead and put these ingredients back in since we won't need them for a while yet. And just like the last potion, we're going to load up the water, but we're not going to put nether wart in because we do not need to use nether wart to make a potion of weakness. We're just going to go ahead and drop in our fermented spider eye right on top. And that's going to go ahead and give us a potion of weakness. So if we drink it, we're going to do, uh, debuff or, uh, yeah, debuff ourselves with weakness effect. But we're going to add gunpowder next to make it a splash potion. Now you can add gunpowder to any, almost any potion, I believe, to make it a splash potion. So you can throw it and the bottle will smash in the ground and apply the effect to the area around where it impacts at. So now we have Potion of Weakness. When we drink this, we'll have negative four attack damage. Let's brew in the gunpowder next. And, while, and when this is done, we're gonna have three splash potions of weakness, which will be important for our next episode because we're gonna be killing zombie villagers next episode and we need the splash potion of weakness to apply the weakness effect to them so we can cram a golden apple down their throat and convert them into a regular villager again. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video. And notice that we have a different icon now to indicate a splash potion. We have this little red purplish tag up there. And again, potions don't stack. So there we go. We have brewed up a splash potion of weakness. Now note that this little bar here is depleted a little bit. One blaze powder goes quite a long ways in the brewing stand, so don't feel like you have to have a whole stack of blaze powder before you start brewing. One or two is going to be fine for probably most of your potion brewing needs. So with that said, next up is the potion of night vision, which we're going to use redstone dust to extend the duration of. Okay, so now we're ready to brew up the potion of night vision. So. This one we're going to go ahead and again load in the three water bottles so we get three potions out. It doesn't make sense to brew less than the full three bottles because it only takes one of the ingredient to make from one to three bottles. So you might as well do the three bottles each and every time. And then we're going to first off we're going to convert these into awkward potion with our nether wart. Like we did for the first uh, potion of slow fall. And then the brewing sound is going to process a bubble away. And when this bar completes we will have three awkward potions. We'll then brew in the golden carrot for the night vision effect, and then we'll brew in the redstone dust to extend the duration out from this default duration. All right, another wart has been done brewing. Let's drop in the golden carrot. And it looks like we've used up about a quarter of the blaze powder in here, and we've pretty much almost done with our potion brewing demonstration before we go out and start talking about how to farm nether wart. And it doesn't take too very too very uh, doesn't take too long to brew potions up. All right, so we have potion of night vision. It's going to give us night vision effect for three minutes. Now, if we brew in a redstone dust on top of that, it's going to extend that duration out to I believe eight minutes. So one potion will give you night vision for eight minutes, which will be helpful for caving, exploring you know dark spaces uh, inside of ocean monuments, temples, caves. Um, strongholds, anywhere that you would have to light up of torches, which honestly, you're probably going to light up torches anyways. Um, the nether could benefit from night vision, I think. It brightens it up a little bit. So now we have a eight minute potion of night vision. Now, it's important to note that you can only extend either the duration or the magnitude. You cannot do both. So our next potion we're going to brew up is a potion of swiftness, which will give us a movement speed increase. For that we need sugar, we need nether wart sugar, and then we're going to use a glowstone dust to extend the magnitude of the effect. So, again, we're going to load up our three water bottles. We're going to convert them into awkward potions. We're then going to brew the sugar in, and then we're going to see the magnitude of the effect. 
Then we're going to brew in the glowstone dust to see what sort of increase we get to that effect. Okay, we have completed the first brewing into awkward potions. Let's add in the sugar and let that process. We're about halfway through the brewing, uh, the blaze powder that we've loaded in here originally. So I guess the need for that extra blaze rod was a little bit unnecessary, which means I can convert that to eyes of enders for making ender chests, which we will cover in a future episode. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. And now we have a potion of swiftness, which when applied will give us plus 20% speed for three minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and extend the magnitude so we get a bigger percentage speed increase by brewing in the glowstone dust. Now applied speed two for one minute 30. So when we drink this, we'll have 40% speed for one and a half minutes versus 20% speed for three minutes. So you can see that you have a trade off there. If you're gonna use speed two to go travel somewhere in a you know faster period, you might wanna use the magnitude extension trick in order to get faster speed. But remember, you'll have to consume more potions then. If you extend the duration, I believe you reduce the default magnitude a little bit. So if you want longer lasting potions, you're gonna have less of an effect. So there is that, those are the trade-offs that need to be made. So we're gonna do one more potion. I need to go up and check my storage unit to see if I have any magma cream because we're gonna make the Nether Explorer's most favorite potion next if I have the materials, which is gonna be Potion of Fire Resistance. Okay, so we got all of our materials together to brew up a Potion of Fire Resistance. So we're gonna take this Potion of Swiftness out of the brewing stand. We're gonna load in three more water bottles, and we're gonna go ahead and turn them into awkward potions by brewing in our Nether Wart. Then we're gonna brew in a Magma Cream to convert that into a potion of fire resistance. Now what fire resistance does is makes you invulnerable to fire damage for a period of time. The default is going to be three minutes. So if you fall into a lava lake, you chug this potion, you have three minutes now to get out of the lava lake. Or if you're fighting blazes, you can chug this potion and, and the fire won't do any damage to you. You may still take projectile damage from a blaze, I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that for you guys. But at least the, if you step into a fire from a blaze fireball, you'll be safe. So we have our awkward potion brewed in. Let's brew in some magma cream, which means send up a ma uh, magma cube farm in the future may be a good idea, especially if I keep falling to freaking lava lakes. Like I have been, oh my gosh, so many dips in the lava in the last week here. Okay, so we brewed up our potion of fire resistance. Now, notice that it doesn't give us a percentage effect. This means Fire resistance is a binary effect, so we cannot increase the magnitude or the amount of resistance we get from the potion by brewing in a glowstone dust. But we can go ahead and brew in a redstone dust to extend the duration. Now, now these binary effect potions, there's really no downside to extending the duration out. So to me, it makes a lot of sense. It's a, yeah, if you have a binary effect potion like slow fall, fire resistance, or night vision, automatically just go out and extend the duration out to the full eight minutes. So there we go. So we have three potions of fire resistance for eight minutes. And I'm gonna take my slow falling potions and load them back in here and go ahead and extend their durations out as well with another piece of redstone dust. And we are nearing the end of the blaze powder. So that means we'll be soon be consuming the other blaze powder for brewing. Now, overall potions, they do give you a little bit of an edge in the game. I don't use a lot of them. I keep a few potions of fire resistance when I'm in the nether. I am uh, slow fall is good for fighting the end dragon. Uh, splash potion of weakness I probably do the most of because this is how you cure zombie villagers, which we'll be going over in the next episode. And our potion of slow falling has been extended to four minute duration. So when you're fighting the end dragon, you only need a few of these because the fight, I don't know, the fight would take you 12 minutes solo. I have not yet done a solo dragon fight, by the way, which will be coming up in a few episodes here. Speed two. Yeah, I don't really use speed potions much. Fire resistance. Yes, that will always be on my hot bar from here on out when I'm in the nether. At least one, maybe two in the inventory. Potion of night vision. I don't really do that a whole lot. I mean, if I'm going to be working underwater without a, without a conduit, I'll do a potion of water breathing and a potion of night vision to simulate the conduit effects. Other than that, not so much. Okay, so that concludes our potion brewing demonstration. And I'll, again, I'll link to you guys to the Minecraft wiki down below to get the recipes for the different potions. But the process is pretty much going to always be the same. Empty water bottle, nether wart to make awkward potion, 
whatever effect you're going for ingredient and then either gunpowder or glowstone dust to increase the duration or magnitude accordingly. So the next thing we need to do is we need to talk about nether wart farming. Nether wart's hard to find in the nether. It only grows in certain locations such as bastions and nether fortresses. And even inside of a nether fortress, it's very rare. Now, nether wart is this uh, bulbous red plant here. Only grows on soul sand, not soul soil, just soul sand. And when it's fully mature, it drops between two to four pieces of nether wart. So I always recommend people when you find some, grab it up and bring it back and then set yourself up a little nether wart garden like this and just go ahead and see this gave us well okay, i can't really tell how much that gave us because i had other nether wart in my inventory and that looks like that one dropped two oh three of them so we plant that back and it takes a little while to grow and you can't bone meal but it's important to have so you always have nether wart on hand so if you need a potion you don't have to go to the nether to look for it. So remember, plant on soul sand and then wait till fully mature. Right now, this is age zero. I believe fully mature is age five to harvest the most and you cannot bone meal these. So I'm gonna extend this patch out in the future. Probably get another six soul sand and bring it out to make it a 12, I, uh, six by two for a dozen plants growing, which should be enough to keep me in nether wart for all my potion brewing needs. Now, the most commonly used potion that I'd use is Splash Potion of Weakness, which does not require Nether Wart, which is a good thing. But it does take Gunpowder, which means that my, you know, farm is going to be super critical. And we're just going to go ahead and run over to our villager, zombie villager pen and drop off the Splash Potions of Weakness in our prep chest for the next episode. And there we go. So we got all of our workstations, some trading materials, our beds all set up. So if you're curious about hearing zombie villagers and setting up a villager trading uh, operation, be sure to hit that subscribe button for the next episode. And in this episode, we've covered brewing. Now, I didn't go through every single recipe for every single potion because there's a great graphic on the wiki that does that for you. All the ingredients, all the effects, everything. I'll link that in the description down below. If you are curious about curing zombie villagers as you hear them growing underground here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified of the next time the video goes live. And the next episode will be all about curing those zombie villagers and setting up a villager training operation and breeding villagers to get more villagers. I only have two, which is the minimum you need to get started breeding villagers. So we're going to be building basically a village from scratch here. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know I did a good job. Don't forget to follow me over on Twitter for stream and video updates. I also stream live over at twitch.tv slash Link in the description down below and where you can come and ask me all kinds of Minecraft questions and you can watch me do stuff in this world as well as from the Adults Craft server. Season 2 will be starting next month, September 2020. Get hyped because it's going to be a fun season. And I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.